So this is a, a Burroughs icon that I've just started booting up. And these machines do not have any local storage, no hard drive, no floppy. So they uh, get their operating system from across a very slow ARCnet network from a Lexicon file server. And it's currently uh, getting that operating system, that QNX Unix-like operating system from the Lexicon as we speak across that very slow network. And in a few moments, it will uh, execute it in RAM and we'll be able to log in and access the resources on the Lexicon file server. The uh, speed of the network was only 2.5 megabits. All right. Uh, we got a blinking cursor in the uh, upper left there, and we're going to get one in the upper right that just says that it is loading. And we got a code 0307 up there as well. That's good. And in a few moments, we'll see the login screen for the icon. There we go. So there's the Unisys icon login screen. And we'll see the system information there. And you'll notice that I am node 18. That node number for ArcNet was recorded in EEPROM by on you know from factory on each icon. And they started at node 16. And you can have up to 16 nodes connected to one lexicon file server, which was given node 1. So this is obviously the the uh, third node of the workstations connected to the lexicon. So I'm going to log in as a root user, and the default password is superuser. And you'll notice that um, there's a few things. I got my prompt, but that uh, Unisys, which is the company that Burroughs became when they merged with Spiri, um, has branded this software. So anything after 1986 when they merged was called Unisys. Um, and the epoch was January 1st, 1980, uh, which is different than the Unix epoch of January 1st, 1970. So that's one key difference. And that could cause problems. If we have uh, certain files that, you know, have a modification date in the future, then certain commands may, you know, bark at using them, right? So we should probably in, uh, up our date to something in the 1990s. So I'm going to up it to January 1st, 1994. Whoops. 1994. There we go. And if I type the date command, you'll see that it is indeed January 1st, 1994. Uh, this was the year that the Ontario government uh, canceled the ICON project and ordered school boards to destroy all ICON hardware and software. Luckily, this lexicon and ICON and software survived. So that's a good thing. Um, now I'm going to type LS question mark. There were no man pages for uh, commands on early QNX. So you just had to write the command, give it the question mark argument, and it would tell you how to use it. And so you'll see there's no long listing for ls. Instead, um, if you list files in a directory, um, subdirectories would be prefixed by a plus symbol. Moreover, you're running these commands on the lexicon, not on your local workstation. So every, le every icon computer is technically on the lexicon file server. So I could change to whatever drive letter I want on the lexicon file server. Drive one um, root directory is the first device that the lexicon booted from. 
So if it was a floppy, it's a floppy. If it was a hard drive, it was a hard drive. Every lexicon had a floppy and a hard drive. Uh, there's a device aid as well, which is the RAM disk that stores the QNX operating system that is sent down to all the workstations, but we won't modify that. And so I'm on device one. I can type LS. I can see what's on that device on the lexicon file server. And I see that there are two subdirectories, CMDS commands, the equivalent of the bin directory on modern Unix systems. And uh, there is a config directory which is the equivalent of the Etsy directory on modern Unix systems. And they're directories because they're prefixed with a, a plus symbol. So that's kind of interesting. The other neat thing is um, if we want to look inside the commands directory, you'll notice that there are quite a few standard Unix commands here that we all know, like PWD to print your working directory, um, there's sort and split and mount and make directory and echo uh, and cat. So you can echo hello world. And it would echo hello world. Or you could type who and it would show you who is on the system. I'm node 18. However, <laughs> I'm the only user on this node. <laughs> Because you have to use QNX, not from the lexicon file server, not locally. You have to use it across the network. That's how it worked. It was all net booted and net used. And so that's kind of interesting. But there are some, let me just fix the screen there. Adjust that. There are, are um, some commands here that are not standard um, Unix commands that were just QNX specific. Like there was, there is... Uh, D check, which checks disk devices for, you know, bad blocks and other errors. And there's check FSYS, um, which checks the integrity of uh, a file system, QNX specific. And then there's also ZAP. ZAP can destroy a file that's been corrupted permanently. And these, these commands made their way into modern QNX. So there's some remnants of modern QNX in this ancient uh, version of QNX. But some other key differences is you will notice that there is no chmod command for changing permissions. And that is because that was handled by the change attribute command. And if I show you the usage of that command, you'll see that it can change regular attributes on files as well as permission attributes. So P equals whatever the permission, permission attribute is, like read or write. The um, other, another neat thing is there is no PS command. You will have noticed, and instead of PS, uh, QNX used task. These are the running tasks on the lexicon file server. And um, you can actually see uh, three columns on the right, uh, because instead of parent and child processes, in like we talk about in Unix systems, they had father and son processes instead. Same thing. And child processes that were stored by the same parent were called brothers. So... Kind of retro there, but uh, definitely something that is different than modern Unix and Linux systems. Uh, the files command does a recursive listing of files from your current location, wherever you are in the file system. So if I type files, you'll see a list of all the files on this particular file system, including the ones in the commands directory and the config directory. And you'll notice that there is a print subdirectory of the config directory as well. And if we go into that directory, so I can cd to config forward slash print and do a pwd to verify that I'm there. It says that I'm on node 1, which is the lexicon file server, the one that has a storage, storage device 1, um, and the uh, config print subdirectory under the root. And I could do an ls while I'm in there if I wanted to and see the files that were in that that are in that directory. But if I wanted to go up a parent directory, uh, I can't use cd dot dot um, like we do on modern Unix systems. Instead, I'd have to type cd and then correct. That's the way QNX did it. That means parent directory. And so if I do a pwd now, you'll see that I am actually in 
the config directory now, not the config print directory. Same thing for changing to a, a, a sister directory. I could go up a directory to the root and down to CMDS just by typing CD caret uh, CMDS and that you don't need the forward slash in that command. It'll just go up one parent and then down to CMDS. And so now if I type PWD, I am in the CMDS directory. There we go. And so that's kind of that's kind of different than modern Unix or Linux systems. You can also re-log in to the lexicon file server. You could just type login. So if I type login, it would log me off my node, node 18, my workstation, and uh, allow me to log back in again. I can log in as the root user. And the password is super user. Now, of course, I won't see that nice, cool login screen that I saw when I booted up, but you can still, you can still get that login screen. It's, it's in your config directory. The config directory stores config files as well as scripts like startup scripts, as well as um, this uh, program that displays the boot screen. So if I go into the config directory and press enter, there we go, and type PWD. I'm in the config directory, and when I do an LS, I'll be able to see the put boot screen script. So I could actually write put underscore boot underscore screen, and I could, I have to give it two arguments. The first argument is actually the logo that will be displayed, so that's in the boot logo file. And I could also put um, the text underneath that logo. And normally that comes dynamically from the lexicon based on what the system is running. So I don't have that in a file here, but I could just type hello. And we'll try to look for the hello file and say that it can't find it. And so when I do that, it will show me my beautiful Unisys icon logo there, formerly Burroughs. <laughs> And then it will probably bark at me and say, where is that file called hello? So I can display the text underneath it. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, if we look at some other scripts that are in that config folder, uh, they're mostly related to system initialization. So um, there's a system init script, sys.init. And if we cat that, I'm sure it's longer than one page, you'll see that it's got um, all the commands that are run to initialize a system. A lot of these commands are run from that RAM disk, uh, the commands that are built into QNX and that RAM disk on the lexicon file server. And so that, that's a cool looking handful of, of uh, shell script there. And um, if you uh, look at the bottom there, I think I see, yes, there is config put boot screen. <laughs> and they use the different logo, they use the Ike. Uh, icon net logo and the ATP message, right? So I just use the regular logo. Um, and uh, the boot ATP message would be the message that is displayed at boot time that we saw before we got our login prompt. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, short walkthrough of, of QNX, ancient QNX on the its original platform, which was the Burroughs icon.